Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, has a plan to transform not just the Saudi economy, but the Saudi society. And I don't need to tell you, given your experience, how ambitious that plan is. What's the most difficult part? Because to me, they all seem difficult. First of all, he's, he's an amazing young man. And, and the most difficult part, I think, for sure, is cultural. If you, if you think back in, in 1970, Saudi Arabia was two million people and oil was two dollars a barrel. And the culture, a monarchy, was based uh, upon a family unit. And that family unit was a combination of a Bedouin culture that had really existed for thousands of years. So the Bedouin culture was free of all of the elem elements of a normal commercial civilization. There was trade, but it was limited. And the, the purity of Islam, denoted by Mecca and Medina, gave them a special place in the world as the guardian of something very sacred and very pure. So in this necessity of diversifying from an oil-based economy, which you've talked about all day, the idea of now taking 30 million people, a population which consists half of youngsters and young people, and say we're going to diversify so that 30 years from now, the necessity of relying on an oil curse uh, at the hands of sometimes the West and sometimes the East will be freed and we'll have a diversified economy in a future for, for the youngsters. But the, the, the biggest challenge that this young man has, he's so smart, he's so bright, he's so focused, is conveying that vision to his own people in a subtle cadence that they can adjust to. I know you're betting on him, not just because you want to, because you have to as a friend, as a supporter. Do you really think he'll succeed? I do. I do. The, 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 bold, the boldness of his vision and his youth came at an amazing time in the world. And all the stars aligned for him. So the opportunity that he has with America's sponsorship, um, President Trump really embraced his father and, and him on a very personal level. And Jared Kushner, who helped engineer the first American Arab Islamic summit that was here a few months ago, um, created a breakthrough, a breakthrough in relations, not necessarily economic relations, but just relations. At the same time, the geopolitical situation of the Gulf, which you know is amazingly complex. From, and fraught right now. Uh, very, very strained, but strained in, in, um, in a manner that demands leadership from another generation. And amazingly enough, you have it across the Gulf. So you have Mohammed bin Zayed in Abu Dhabi, you have Mo Mohammed bin Salman and his father the king here, and you have Sheikh Tamim, the Emir of Qatar. And even though there's a family dispute, my belief is that out of the evolvement of this next generation, discussing issues they've never really discussed before in a family setting, what could come out of it would be a quantum leap. Tom, this country needs foreign capital if its economy is to evolve beyond oil. That goes without saying. Who's going to invest here while the Saudis are in the midst of this standoff with Qatar? I'll tell you, I think, I think we'll all invest here. I, I think today was a great tribute to the fact that if you walk through the halls of this hotel, you think you're in New York City. What, what's needed is transparency, consistency, a legal system that's understandable, a capital system that's usable. Neither of those things exist yet. Not yet, but they're on their way. Are you still involved in brokering a truce between the Saudis and their allies and Qatar? No, I've, I've never had an official role. I, I've, I've always been an advocate of, of allowing all those great sovereign nations to solve that in their own way, which, which they will do. It's, it's, you think it's going to happen? 
Yes, for sure it's going to happen. When it's going to happen, I can't tell you. But this has been going on for hundreds of years. Um, Qatar is a sovereign nation, for the viewers who, who don't know it, is it is the tip of the peninsula of Saudi Arabia. So the necessity of, of the Gulf as a unit, taking care of all of its own issues as a unit, is imperative, especially as it confronts Iran and Turkey uh, across the way.